Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this uh, latest Holophon workshop, Analog Loops, Making Tape Loops with a Reel-to-Reel -reel Tape Recorder. Uh, thank you to Multiplay.ca for funding these workshops. Uh, so because we are on, we are a Regina-based organization, we'd like to acknowledge that the land on which we gather is Treaty 4 territory, traditional territory of the Soto, Cree, Dakota, Lakota, and Nakota peoples, as well as the homeland of the Métis. And so uh, I'd like to now introduce this evening's presenter, Will Kaufold, who is presenting from Treaty 6 territory, a traditional meeting grounds, gathering place, and traveling route to the Cree, Soto, Blackfoot, Métis, Dene, and Nakota Sioux. Will Kaufold is a multidisciplinary artist from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. He's been performing, composing, and making music for over 18 years. Kaufold has performed over 200 shows nationally and internationally, released eight solo albums, and I have to get all of those, and played on 11 additional records. His most recent projects include Form, Three Moon Jasks, and Ancient Greens, ranging in style from lo-fi house to electronic to ambient and experimental. In addition to Kaufold's musical career, he is becoming a recognized film photographer both locally and nationally. His unique composition, use of double exposure and manipulation of expired film has resulted in a growing following use in various print media and recognition on, on, across online platforms. So uh, with that, take it away, Will. Okay, right on. Well, um, so I, you might be seeing this screen because this is gonna be the kind of the, like the zoom in camera so I can kind of show you what's going on tonight. Um, and you might not see my face as much unless you want to, you know, pin me or you can look and see what you want. But I'm going to be showing a variety of things using my phone so that we can get a little more um, depth out of it. And uh, hopefully that's okay. So I'm going to be showing you maybe a few loops. We'll make a few loops with this reel to reel and uh, of different links. And uh, I'll show you how to thread it into the machine. How to how to cut it, um, little tips, and uh, yeah. So I kind of learned this just you know through my own research without any formal training and um, just you know YouTube, <laughs> the best way to learn learn something, and uh, yeah, it's uh, particularly Heimbach. I don't know if anyone's watches Heimbach, but he's awesome. But sometimes there's a little bit that you need to learn. So he's got all the nicest gear, right? He's like got these brilliant reel to reels and he makes it look really effortless. And sometimes on these older machines uh, that aren't as good, it's a little more uh, hairy and you have to have little workarounds. But uh, yeah. So maybe I'll just start with the um, setup that I have going right now, because it looks a little bit chaotic, and it is. And my one computer, which is, gonna, is going to be streaming the sound for the, um, the reel-to-reel, um, has to be rebooted again, because it's not happy. But I'm running everything into my trusty um, sound card. I don't know if anyone has one of these, but it's like a workhorse for I me. Mean, it seems like everyone has one of these fast track pros. Um, and then I'm going into this Ubuntu machine. Just give me one second here. Because I'm going to try and reboot this. Yeah, it's um, temperamental here because it's, I'm triple booting. So I don't know if anyone triple boots the machines, but. I've got Linux and Ubuntu and uh, Mac OS on this laptop. So sometimes it needs to be booted into, um, booted again here. Um, yeah, so what I've got running here today is like just the like bottom end of synthesis, but maybe not, I don't know. This thing is pretty cool. It's really bare bones though. <laughs> As you can see, it's got like a, uh, just like a eighth inch jack and, uh, and a few presets, some or orchestra presets. 
and uh, this beautiful custom drumming section. Um, and it's not too bad. It's good for something like this. Um, when you're just going to make some simple loops. So I'm going to be making these loops, but I wouldn't say it's like anything really like spectacular we're going to be listening to, but I think it will sound cool. And it's just to give you an idea of maybe like where you could take it from here. Not really like, I'm not going to be making any masterpieces tonight, but uh, well, who knows? Who knows what will come out? Um, so yeah, I'm running this synth into um, my little Euro rack mixer here, just the one line in. And then I'm using the RCA outs, um, the tape out from here. And that's um, going into the reel to reel. So you can see on this side of it, on this side, we've got uh, just these two RCAs. It also has these mic ins. You may be lucky enough to have a reel to reel that has quarter inch ins, but I am not. Actually, there was a br like a brilliant silver face Sony uh, reel to reel for sale on Facebook Marketplace. The guy wanted, what did he want? Like 200 bucks. It was crazy. The ad had been up for like six minutes. I messaged him, it, it was sold already. So if you can get that kind of deal, it had quarter inch ins out, it was gorgeous, but I missed it. Okay, just give me a sec. Oh. Just boot this, oh my goodness. Two hands, right? Um, so while that's booting, I'll keep talking about this. So we've got these RCA ins, uh, there they are. And it's going into the tape here. And then it's monitoring on these tiny little um, VU meters, I guess. Maybe, maybe that's what they're called. Oh, you can see it moving. Um, yeah, oh, good, we boot it up here. So you can also see into the workings of streaming your reel-to-reel. -reel. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna get the zoom open here. Okay, well, um, I'm gonna show you how to do this and then I'm gonna revisit this later uh, and we'll, we'll just get on with it. So, um, where was I? Oh yeah, the audio in is going through here. Um, there we have it. And then we've got two different um, heads on this machine. And usually it's covered up by something like this. So you'll have to make sure you take that off so you can get, get a good look at it. And this machine is uh, great because it has two different heads. Um, Sometimes they have like one head, an all in one head, or sometimes they're like close together. But because we have these two, it's really great because um, this one is the um, erase head. And then here we have the play head. And uh, that's great because we want to bypass this one because every time the tape goes around, um, and you're recording, it gets erased first by this head here. And then it gets uh, recorded on with this one. Uh, and so it's a play and record. Sorry, I should have said that play and record head. So you wanna bypass the erase so that you can do a more seamless loop on it and kind of layer things on top of it without it being erased. Uh, but I'll get to that more a little bit later. And then on this machine, we've just got um, a forward for playing. You can see, switch it on, there it goes. And then also um, this one, this, if you can see it's moving, that's what uh, will send the, send the uh, tape around. 
And not only that, this one's got two speeds. So you can record at a fast speed and then switch it over to the slow speed, uh, three and three quarters. And it'll slow your um, recording right down, which is sounds really gnarly. So, um, yeah, I might talk a little bit more about this, but we've got two, two channels on this one and you can record uh, each channel separately. So kind of like a four track, but just two, right? <laughs> but I'm only gonna be recording on both channels at once today. And uh, yeah, generally it gets a little bit messy, I find when I'm trying to record one, like two channels separately. And I think that's just a limitation of this machine. But I think if you had a, like a cleaner, better machine, you could really record on multiple channels and have them nice and crisp. Um, so these are the record buttons. And so they have to be pressed down in order to monitor and to record. So while they're pressed down, you can hear the audio um, that you're playing that's going to be recorded and you can check your levels and see if that's all right. And uh, you have to keep them held down. And as you're holding them down, you click this into forward and then it'll start recording. So that's kind of how that'll, that'll work. You just have to cancel that. Um, so I think we'll just continue here. So unless anyone has any questions about like the tape machine specifically, but um, it's pretty straightforward, I think. You can also put a question in the chat if you want. If you don't want oh, to talk. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so, and I can answer it later if you think of it later. So I'm gonna set this up so we can kind of see um, how we're actually gonna go about cutting and splicing the tape and, and what I've got here. Uh, so there's a few materials you will, you should have, but maybe you don't have to have in order to, to do the actual splicing and cutting. Um, something to cut the tape with. And so I'm gonna use this razor blade, which is really handy. Um, makes a nice clean cut. Um, you also wanna have uh, scissors on hand for some messy cuts. And uh, I've got this fancy um, tape, tape. So this is specifically for um, cutting I mean, sorry, specifically for taping tape together. Uh, and that's because it doesn't lift the coating off of the tape because there's special coating on the magnetic tape. Uh, so if you're using regular scotch tape or something, it will lift it, it's not as forgiving and you'll get like, it's more distortion in your, in your splice. But this is good stuff and you can find it at duplication.com. And it comes in um, the seven inch as well as the, um, like the cassette tape. You can see it here, the really small stuff. So that's for doing a cassette tape, but really good stuff. I tried to do splicing without this and this really made a difference. So I recommend it. Um, this is also an optional thing for splicing tape and you can buy these um, blocks, these splicing blocks, they, I think, I'm pretty sure you can get them from duplication.com as well as other places. I think they're called splicing blocks, but this one I had made for me here in town by a woodworker. I just nice. showed him like a picture of one and he was able to do it for me. So if you have some woodworking skill, you could probably make your own. Um, and if you just know the dimensions of the tape, they can come in here and put your grooves in. And you'll, I'll show you this a little bit later. Um, we've got two different angles for cutting the tape and I'll talk about that in a second. And then obviously you're gonna need some kind of tape. Uh, I got this off of Facebook Marketplace for 20 bucks. It was brand new sealed. 
stuff sounds real good. That's yeah. the best. That's the best box cover there. Is it great? It's really awesome. Um, so there's the tape, tape itself. And uh, yeah, why don't we just start doing the splicing and I'll talk a little bit more. So just give me a second. I'm gonna reorient my camera. See if this will work. Oh, I might have to go horizontal. Oh, just a second. Oh. I'm putting a link in the chat. There's a, so this is duplication.ca and there's a tape, audio mastering tape, 2,500 feet for $300. Expensive. Now is that mastering Ooh. tape or splicing tape? That's a, that's an audio tape. Audio tape. Wow. Oh, it's but it's two inch. I think you got a bit. Oh, two inch. Right. The big stuff. Duplication.com also has um, reel to reel tape. And that's, we bought, we've made it, we wrote, recorded a record on to it and we bought fresh stuff from Duplication. And it was really good. Yeah, here it is, reel to reel. So we're you we're using quarter inch today, right? Quarter inch, yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, they have lots of supplies on here. Put the yeah, they one. have they have like uh, splicing blocks and splicing tape. Yeah. And, ra uh, and razors. <laughs> razors too, eh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I found mine at the hardware store or something. A little container. Yeah. So I don't know if you can see me, but we're going to pick first how long it takes. So if you look at the other screen, like the large screen, I'm going to measure out maybe like two arm lengths for this endeavor because I don't want it too long because I don't have a lot of space here to do it. But uh, let's get out. Something like that. Yeah, something like that. I mean, I guess you could measure it and see how long a loop would be if you really need a specific time. But I'm not that interested in doing that. It's not as much fun. So whatever we get, we get. Um, so can you see it here? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah looks yeah. good. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do is do the first cut. Uh, on this 45 degree angle. And 45 degrees is better than doing the 90 degree because you get less click uh, when the loop goes around because it's kind of a gradient um, going over the playhead. And that's why we're gonna use this one here. Little guillotine of sound. Yeah. There's our first one. You can see it makes a nice clean cut. Yeah. And this thing also comes in handy for splicing the tape, but um, with because it kind of holds it down, which is nice. So we put it back in here. Oops. You can see it holds it really nicely. Like that. And then you're ready to go. Otherwise, I would use tape, maybe, like more spicing tape to hold it down here so it doesn't get away on you when you're trying to stick the other one on. If anyone's done like cassette tape looping and splicing their own cassette tape, um, that's a whole nother ball game for skill. Like it's crazy how small that stuff is like and i've done a bit of it and i keep coming back to this because it's so much easier to splice it definitely tries one's patience to be sure for sure yeah like i spent hours trying to splice tape well and uh it's challenging okay i also forgot that i gotta make sure we're not gonna have a little um kink in our loop. So I want to make sure I'm on the same sides here. Uh, and I should talk about this as well. So 
this is the shiny side and most tape you will want to tape on the shiny side because that's not the side that's going to be on the record head it's really going to be um, playing from this other side and you want to keep that nice and clean and it's more dull though i have read there are other tapes that are the opposite of this <laughs> but you will know um, when you get your tape um, how it's wound you'll be able to tell which side is supposed to be on the record head but i think generally most of the time unless it's otherwise noted on the tape um, the recording will be um, this side the dull side will face the record head so now that I think we've got this looped right. Yeah, we do. Okay. Oh, but I probably cut it wrong. Look at that. This one just backwards. Here. Bear with me for a second. Nope, that's good. <laughs> Just make sure. It's one thing to do this um, by yourself. When you're under pressure, I tell you your senses don't uh, align with you. Well, you did do quite a long, quite a long loop. It'd probably be a little. It would be easier if it was shorter, right? Yeah, probably. Yeah, it would be easier. But we're we'll bear with you. Like Thank I said, you. Like I, like I said, I we're we're pretty patient. Yeah. So if you do find you're on the wrong side, you can just cut it again because you can see they don't line up. I did cut this the wrong way, but that's fine. So we'll just fix that. Make it a little shorter. Okay, try that again. There we go. Nice. Now we got to you. Perfect. Great. Okay. So you want to get your tape out and find the spot. And generally, you don't want it too long, but it doesn't have to be super short either. Uh, something you're comfortable with. I mean, the longer you make that tape there, the easier it is, it is to splice. And uh, generally, I find the taping is doesn't have to be perfect. So you don't want to overlap. You're we're gonna try to make a make a butt joint kind of between the two. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I guess you maybe you could do it overlapping. I don't know. I mean, it might overlap a little bit. Okay. This is such 1970s technology. It's 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 so fascinating to kind of see it. Uh, you know, this is what like, you know, people 
in studios 40, 40 years ago would be doing and we're kind of doing it again that's it's really fascinating yeah hey <laughs> bring out the the old the old um skills back to music concrete skills now yeah exactly um it's not perfect it's not perfect but with practice that's that's not great look at that oh well that's going to be the example anyways so you'll notice this one you'll get a lot of click i mean the better you do this the better your like they are overlapping even not my finest work but this will do <laughs> <laughs> this will definitely do so um let's hope we didn't yeah there we go good that's a good one so we got it in place here we've got our tape uh, the tape is gonna this part won't be against the um the play or record head we're gonna have this said so i'm going to try and put this up here so i can show you how to put it into the machine but i need two hands so. And feel free to. Can you see me on both um, both screens, or just the one? I I can. I don't know about every everybody else, but I can. Yeah. Okay. I can see two screens. Yeah. That's good. Okay. Me too. Okay. Good. Um. So. We're going to put it in here, and this is where we're going to bypass the, um, the race head. Get my hand out of the way. There we go. So, in this case, I'm just going to go right above it. And that's the nice thing about this machine. You can just skip that, just go right over it. Some machines you might have to put, um, people put tinfoil here and tape uh, to block this. And that's what you do in a cassette or recorder. You use tinfoil and tape, or just tinfoil works as well. Um, but nice thing about real to real, it's all nice and big. So you just go over top of it like that. And then, I don't know if you can see right here, it's right in the front. And then if I turn this a little bit, oops. You can see it going here through the feeding spool. Is that what they call it? Sure. There we go. That's how you want it feed it through there. Now I will move my camera again here. Um, now we're going to be sending it through like around this, this part, just one way around. And it does, most of the work I think is getting done here, uh, but this kind of helps it. And if you're doing just like regular reel-to-reel, -reel, obviously this is doing a lot of the work, but with the loop, not so much. So you can see, there we go. And I've got a nice loop around here. Ah, and yeah, I <laughs> didn't mention the, other important part is you need to have something for this tape to go around. And you, you might not think about it at first, but it's like really important to have something like with a little bit of a lip to it. So like I found these at some secondhand shop. This one was, was perfect actually. I love this thing for tape because it has so many spots. So you can put it on this spot here or on the bottom or up at the top. So depending on like, what you need. And then also this one's good because it's got these, this toilet paper holder. <laughs> it's great because it's got these um, bars that you can hang off or you can go around any of these. Like really, this is like a tape man's dream. Thank you. <laughs> so let's see. I'm going to need two hands. So just give me a sec. Maybe I'll do this. Let 
see from both angles. Um, so we got kind of a long one, which is good because we have two, um, two things and not a lot of like distance this way, you know? So we're gonna have to occupy this space as well so that we have enough room. You need, you need a really long table. Yeah, a long table, or if you if you have like a uh, a lamp or something, you can have it over like just ha hovering over air. If you've got a nice lamp that's in the distance, like yeah, so either would work really. Let's see. Oh yeah. So I like it a little bit taut, but not too taut. Just, uh, just right. Because if it gets too loose, it will start spooling itself up and it'll wreck your tape. And if it's too tight, it, it'll move slowly or you won't have um, the best traction on that tape. Let's see, oh, oh. Tangled here. So let's see what we got here. Yeah, there we go. That should be good. We're kind of going in a weird. This is kind of weird. That yeah, should work. I guess we'll find out. That's the fun part. Okay. Let's see if it moves. Here. Oh, see there. That's what I was talking about. See that? That's where it starts to spool in on itself. And if it gets sucked in, it'll just start spinning around here and start winding itself up. So I know I need a little more tension. There we go. Let's see, Let's see if that works. Nice. There we go. That's it. There we go. You can see now really clearly it's bypassing the erase head and it's clamped itself down between the record head and the playhead there. Well, the record playhead, this one. Nice. Okay, so what's frustrating now is that the audio setup is not working right. Well, Sorry. we could we could take a ten minute break, and then you could you could try to get it going, and we could come back and yeah, would that, would that work? That would be really good. Yeah, if I could just have ten minutes um, to try this, and we can have a little break because we've been doing this for a little while. Could you just go um, the output of the machine? Yeah. So if we went out the output, yeah, I see what you're saying. You want to? I'll show you where the output is. So. Uh, here I've got the output. I should have talked about this. Thanks for bringing that up. So we've got two um, eighth inch jacks for this one, which is kind of frustrating. Two little eighth inch, and they are being converted into quarter inch into um, my sound card. I could, I guess I could grab the speakers for this unit, plug them in. And then I could just put my microphone next to it. It's just not very hi-fi, you know? I mean, this isn't hi-fi. This is definitely lo-fi, but <laughs> you, you want that translation so you can really hear what it sounds like. So if that, that's a good idea. If I can't get this working through the computer, I will, I'll just grab the speakers and we'll put the mic up to the speakers and make it easy. Yeah, thanks for that, Steve. Um, okay, so we'll have maybe a, a 10 minute break. Is that all right? Yeah, so we'll come back. Work for me. Yep. Yeah, okay, all right, so. It worked. We got it set up. 
and the audio is running in. And now you can hear the tape. You can hear it quite clearly, hissing away. The thing that happened that I hope didn't happen did happen. And in my error, it, uh, I made a figure eight here. So it's actually flipping from side to side. And so there it flips over. Now we're on one side. And then it's going to flip back here. There you go. You can hear it again. So we get one on one side and one on the other. That's not what I want to do. I want it to be all, all on a single side with no flip. If you understand what I'm saying, but that's just the way it goes. Um, so first thing on this machine is we're going to monitor our input first. So if you can see this, there's these two red buttons. I talked about them before. That's our monitor and our record button. So when I click it, I click them in. You can actually hear the keyboard, and I'll and I'll uh, touch. I have got, got the um, volume here, so it's not too loud. So you can see where we're at. Not bad for a Value Village two dollar thing. So, uh, in order to make this right, <laughs> I'm going to check these view knobs. And I don't want to record too hot on this tape because if I record too hot, it's going to just obliterate it. But I maybe want a little bit of distortion. So we're going to find a happy level. That's hot. And to do that, I've got these two knobs here. These are my volume knobs for input and output, which is kind of frustrating. They're not separated, but I've got input and output here. So it's pretty loud, but that's just the way it is. So I thought maybe we just start with a little whatever, just a little plunking on this. I don't know what. Maybe we'll do a little bit higher so we can drop it down an octave later. Okay, let's our levels. Yeah, that's good enough. So the, to start this, I'm going to hold this down. And then as I'm holding it down, press play and it'll start recording. And I'll just make something up. see what happened. I don't know. Find out. Okay. Oh, yeah, there's the flip. So we kind of messed that up, but maybe we'll splice another one. Or oh, you can hear it really faintly. Because it's on the... So you can learn from my mistake there, because I spliced it the wrong way. Um, so why don't we just fix that? <clears throat> it plays for a bit, and then it gets cut off. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to re-splice this tape, just real quick here. Huh? Yeah. Well, I bet we can't even do it because it's the wrong way, whatever. Let's just do it. Um, I wish I had a funny thing to tell you right now, but 
<laughs> I don't. <clears throat> the um, it really looks in your studio there like there's this this face off between the computers and the the analog gear, and they're like kind of <laughs> kind of um, uh, at at odds or something with each other. Yeah. Right? <laughs> the little um the little audio card on the on the uh corner there is kind of like the uh buffer between the two rival gangs yeah i like that that's really funny that's a good way to think about it i mean it, they are at so at odds i mean when you're trying to get this stuff into the digital realm you run into so many problems and just like headaches like we recorded our album on on this machine and then after we went to master it we were like what did we do what did we do it's crazy but uh it was worth it in the end but there's a lot of there were a lot of struggles okay give me a second i'm gonna on mic for a sec i can put this back in Okay, there we go. Now, I'll get to hear it. Whoa, trippy. Oh, nice. It's this thing that really makes it messed up. <laughs> oh my goodness, here we go. Here's the fun stuff. Look at that. <laughs> oh, goodness. It's funny when you do this live, it's quite the thing. <laughs> I, I noticed you have a little break in your reel there. Is that? Oh, yeah, this thing. Problem? Um, no. Not for this. I mean, if you were doing like real stuff with the, like real real to real stuff, like if you were like playing your records or playing your tapes, I guess mm -hmm. you'd have a problem. But with this, it's no problem because it's just a just a, a surface to go off of. Um, this is like a half size one or something. It's like quite small, but I have like full size ones too. But this is just nice and small and compact. So I'd say we just splice this, just cut this again, because it was so, um, it was sounding kind of cool, but uh, it came apart on us. So let's cut it. it I, I was I was kind of surprised that it didn't overlap more, because you, you were playing for quite a while, and I thought yeah. it was going to overlap. Is that I think it was because um, it was doing that figure eight pattern. Uh, and, and the figure eight, like it flipped over, right? And so on to the other side, it didn't record for one rotation around. Oh, okay. uh, and that's why it didn't uh, overlap. Also, um, 
the record on this is like really powerful and it can like it can wipe out what you've done mm. so like if you record too loud you can just record right over your other stuff mm. uh, so you gotta be really careful about it so let's try again i guess yeah. let me make sure this is right on the right side, no figure eight. There we go. I have a question. Yeah. Do you think there would be a sweet spot where you could record over yourself? And like, where is the sweet spot where you could hear two things at once? It's like, is it is it possible? It is possible. Yeah. yeah. And I was, I'm hopefully going to be able to demo that for you. Um, I find on here, I'm this thing is either all or nothing this this recorder um so it's kind of like maybe i do a loud one and then i, I do a softer recording after maybe at like 25 percent volume and the first one kind of like you know at 80 percent and you'll hear the second one after um if there's more space in your recording like say it's not constant sound there is the, the pockets between you can fill up as well so you kind of have to play with that balance. Uh, there's no like magic formula or anything. And often I'm like, oh, should I chance it? Should I try and put one more layer on this? And then I do and I'm like, oh, I lost my first layer. <laughs> you know, you just got to feel it out. Okay. Give me a sec. Splice this again. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes I see guys with little, um, they have little clips, clip everything together. Yeah, that would be a really handy thing right now. But, uh, and I've seen these tape machines where they have, like, they actually, you can splice the tape on the machine. So it'll be rotating around here. And then you stop it, clip, clip, it's got a splicer. You just splice it, tape it right there, you're ready to go. But that's a luxury I can't afford. But this makes it a little more fun, right? And if you get the right thing, like if you're really happy with it, the struggles are all worth it. Nice. That's way better splice. Okay. Let's see if we can just tape these like this instead of uh, putting the tape on one. So I've just lined them up here, but you can't really see it. Uh, and then I'll tape them back together with the other tape. Let's go a little bit longer this time, maybe. So we can just make it easy. Um, I was doing record, like taking field recordings with a little zoom mic and putting them onto tape. That's, um, I found that really nice. So if you using a field recording and then layering something on top of it, because the textures and like the frequencies are so different, you kind of retain, retain a bit of that, both, both, uh, recordings. That's not, not terrible. Okay. <clears throat> I'll get this looped on so sex. Oh, I 
I don't know if you can hear me or not, but I'm going to keep this in. Yeah, a little bit. Around the race head. I just get that. I was, when you do these Zoom things, it's like, not only are you doing the whatever workshop, you're also like running a little TV show and it's the you know, same thing. <laughs> Yeah, luckily, it, really yeah, it's kind of, I mean, it's, uh, okay, third time is a charm, right? See if we can put another layer on this. Okay. So I'll prep this up again. Monitor it first and check and see what our level is. I think we should put like guns on there. Yeah, why not? Those are the cutest little percussion sounds. See how that sounds. Hopefully, we didn't. We shouldn't have lost too much because it's quite a different sound. Not a masterpiece, but that shows proof of concept. <laughs> <laughs> um, but let's maybe let's try something else here. A little bit of drone underneath. There's a good horn sound on here. Uh, yeah, but not, not too loud or it's going to really take over. It's got to be really soft, I guess. Maybe we'll do like a, no, mm, no, something like that. Just kind of soft in the background. See what happens. Maybe it'll erase everything we just did. Yeah, this one. Okay. Fingers crossed. Oh yeah. Yeah, we got three layers there. Can you, are you able to hear that at all? Yep. Uh, and then let's just slow it down. 
because everything's better when you slow it down. So I've got this little speed switcher. Don't do it while the tape's running. Um, well, maybe you can. I, I would just be worried. Yeah, so um, I just need that humming to be done for a little bit. So yeah, like that's kind of, I feel like that's kind of cool actually. It was not uh, thought out or anything, but once we slowed it down, it gave it a real different feel. You can hear all the hiss and the crackling. I even don't mind a little, you know, you can hear where the loop is, but I don't know. It's not that bad, but you could, um, do it do it better like uh, there's a tiny little spot here where the there's no um there's a gap here but uh um if you get yourself a real good loop then you know add a little add some other synths on top and maybe you got something sequencing or you have your put your delay on it and uh you could kind of build up from there you've got your background ambience going um, that's something that I've done quite a bit. Have my loop going, and then I've got my other synths going with a sequence. And then, you know, as the synths are playing, this is also going. And then I can switch out the tape. I've got another tape ready. Put it put it into the machine, and then fade the synths out. Now you've got a new lush soundscape or hiss going or whatever it is. And then, then you can change on to the next part. But uh, if you've watched like YouTube tape people, you, you know, you can see they, they are generally not live looping. You know, they're not like recording their sounds on here and changing it as it goes because it's like too delicate. Often I see these guys like, you know, ambulance being the, the big one, right? He's got his loop already going on his machine, his tape machine, and then he's adding his stuff around it with delay or whatever he's doing um and so you know this kind of setup can be really sweet like that um i was gonna make another one do you have any questions or any comments anything you want to say would you recommend um splicing micro cassette or mini oh. cassette? <laughs> Uh, no, <laughs> I mean, I like, I don't know if you can buy the tape for it, even like the special tape, like we've got the stuff. Um, and the quality of micro cassette is really noisy, but people would be like blown away if you could do it well. I mean, you spent your time at it i think people would be really they'd like it so i don't know yes it's like <laughs> that's a good good question then would you do it i'm gonna try yeah yeah you should try <laughs> please i'd like to see that um wow because i you know have you done it with regular cassette just cassette yeah. Just cassette, yeah. 
So you know that. Go ahead. Oh, I've only just like recorded and then use just play that back and use that just for right. the sound of it. I've never used a reel to reel. Right. Yeah. yeah. So you know how difficult splicing um, regular cassette is, and then just amp that up. Right. It's like how how small is my cassette? It's really small. I don't know. Well, there's these. Um, I think it's the same. I think it's the same size tape. Oh, uh, maybe not. Is it really? They're oh, they're kind of so awesome. I don't know. They're kind of the same thickness, but maybe it's I don't know. I tried it a a couple of months ago, and I, I did not have a good time. It was too <laughs> it's too fussy. But you know, but you know, a, a sort of an easier alternative would be to find the um the old answering machine endless loop cassettes, oh. which are, already have a loop in them. Yeah, and I've got one of those. Oh. You can you can find you can find them the regular size cassette and I'm sure that you could prob there's probably somewhere you could get the, the micro as well. So yeah. They've heard of that. Um that's like a really cool idea. Um I have seen people do it without the micro cassette that's uh, from an answer machine. According um, according to Wikipedia, micro cassette tape is the same uh tape stock as cassette. Is it? Yeah. 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 I, just, I, just, I literally just looked at it. Thanks, man. Oh, wow. Which, then, which means it's still not going to be easy. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. And you have less, like if you were making it yourself, you have less space to like make the loop. So I guess it would be a short loop regardless, fitting inside the little cassette. Unless you did it between two machines. Ah, uh, yeah. I've seen, I've seen people do that with cassettes. There's mm -hmm. this one. There's this one fellow, Fami Merced, that's on YouTube. He often has like a, a tape loop going between uh, two Walkmans. Yeah. Oh there, wow. There's like a special cassette for it. They, no, he they, they he actually hacks up the cassettes so that it's open. He just oh, kind of yeah. got it got it with like the the little kind of spindle reels just before it goes by, by the heads. He has those on there and it has the rest of the cassette cut away on both ends and he's got the tape going between two machines like that it's wild wow that oh, is yeah. wild i actually had another question yeah sorry the eraser no, go ahead. Thing, going behind the erase head works swell but <clears throat> if it doesn't if you don't have that luxury um mm -hmm. can you just unhook the electronics or would that not it wouldn't run properly if you do that or I think you can do that. Or um, would that still have a, an effect? It's yeah. Rubbing. Uh, if it's, I feel like if you cut those cables, it probably could work. But I mean, I would be careful. I'd use it on a machine that you're not too attached with. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen when you cut those cables, but it, it should be fine. Um, I've thought about it actually. Um, like especially on cassette players, it'd be really nice just to disconnect the erase head because it's so small and you it's hard to, you know, you put your um, tin foil in in front of it, but it's like an annoying setup. Um, yeah, it's a, that's it, it. Probably would work. I I'd be too afraid to do it on my machines. I'm not too good with um, the innards of electronics, but. Some of those guys, I'm sure, could just put in a like a toggle switch and. I turn feel it on like that would that would be like the best thing is so that you could do it if you wanted to erase something that you'd done to reuse a loop for whatever reason, you'd have mm -hmm. that option, which would be kind of nice. Exactly. Yeah. Like it'd be a shame to get rid of that, but apparently you can buy little erase wands, um, and you plug them in, and you can just like erase tape with the wand. So that's also something I've, do. I've, I, ha I have a, an old bulky eraser I got from Radio Shack back in the day. It's like this big brick. I think it's just like a big transformer and you, you turn it on and you can feel it buzzing in your hand as you bulky erase a cassette. Wow. Amazing. Do you just rub it over the cassette? You don't even, yeah, just kind of, yeah. You just kind of pass it over in one direction a few a couple of times and it uh, will obliterate what's on the tape. Wow. That's so cool. <laughs> it's handy. Because I mean, I have some 
endless loop cassettes and my tape machines have a hard time even erasing them. Like I'll be like, okay, I'm just going to play it over a race it, record nothing. And I still listen back. And I'm like, Oh, I can hear it still. So I wonder if that would be a good option to really wipe the slate. Um, I had a question. Um, so your machine, you, you can either record or play back. Are there some, mm -hmm. are there some machines that have, you can, always have it in record and like record and playback at the same time so you could add live or how does that work yeah there are machines like that um i've seen a few people on youtube who have them nicer machines that let you monitor as you record um i think that's all that you really have to have to make that work is a machine that has monitoring capability as you're recording unfortunately this one does that, that that's that like a thing that Ian's talking about is kind of referred to as like a three head tape deck. Uh, oh, is it? Yeah. So like you, you know, with the, with the like you know, yours is a two head, right? We erase and then record play. Yeah. And then a three head would have the erase and a separate record and a separate play, like very uh, close to each other, right? Right. Ah. Uh, so that's what you got to look for when you're looking for a tape deck, really. Yeah. Those, three three heads. Yeah, those are those are pretty posh and probably expensive to get a hold of. Mm -hmm. But wow, what if you did? Holy moly, Frippertronics, here you come. Yeah, <laughs> um, that kind of leads into my next question: Is like, how do you get these machines? Like, you you did mention eBay um, before. Like, where? What would you suggest people if they wanted to find an old? old oh machine? yeah. If you want to find an old reel-to-reel, -reel, just look on Facebook Marketplace like 12 times a day, maybe <laughs> 20. Like just pretty much if you were checking anything, it's you just check Facebook Marketplace. Like, I mean, that's what I do. <laughs> Is that, uh, I, I have never used Facebook Marketplace. Is that uh, uh, North America or Canada or, or local? So you can set it to be like nationwide. I mean, you can set it, you just set your geolocation as big as you like, really. I just set it to Saskatoon, but people will ship you stuff from around the world using Facebook Marketplace. So it really depends where you want to look and if the people are willing to ship. Um, of course, it doesn't have any like the protections of eBay. So you got to like PayPal or e-transfer people money if they're far away. But if you're looking in your area, I mean... I see reel to reels that come up, I'd say four or five times a year or something. In, in and, Saskatoon? Yeah, in Saskatoon. Wow. Yeah. So these, these um, are like, uh, like, uh, peop like people like doing um, like an estate sale or something of old stuff or audio yeah. files or what? Yeah, like there was an estate sale just a while ago uh, here in Saskatoon. The guy had, um, he had like five, four reel-to-reels for sale. He had two ones like this that weren't too great, but they looked like they ran. He wanted 20 bucks a piece. Um, then he had just an amazing one. It was a four-track um, reel-to-reel. Nice. Um, yeah. yeah, it was. Yeah, I think it was. And it was huge. Like it was probably yeah. about this big. Oh my, oh my God. Sliders and the tape was recessed. And it had oh. A lid. oh, I know that one. Yeah. Amazing thing. And uh, he, I don't know. I hate it when people list things and they're like, oh, you know, what do you, what would you pay for it? And he's like, well, what do you want for it? And he wanted way too much money, but I don't know how much you got for it, but I think it was expensive. But, yeah. You find those cheap ones. Like I think this one was like 40, 40 bucks. It may have been Kijiji or Facebook marketplace. I can't remember, but I just check those things. Like, I don't know. Every time I get on my phone, I'm on Facebook marketplace looking for things. Mm. I generally, and it, I, I, this is terrible because I, I, Facebook sucks, but it, it learns like what you like. So it knows I like reel to reels. 
So if there's a reel to reel, it shows me. Uh, I don't have to do anything. Um, it'll just come up right away. Definitely check it out if you're not like, if you're into buying old junk. Um, Matthew um, put in the chat, Sony TC 510-2 question <laughs> mark. I don't, um, I don't know what that means. <laughs> is it, that's probably the model of Will's tape machine. I think maybe. Uh, maybe. No, no. It's a what just really. Did? It's a really nice portable reel to reel. Oh. That Techmoan talked about once, I think. Or. Yeah. Okay, hey, gonna... can, can I share a screen briefly? Yeah. Because I, I I wonder if this is the one that you maybe that you. Uh... Well, it'll stop your sound share, so never mind. I'll, I no, won't. it's fine because I can just do it again. Okay. Was that the thing the guy had? Oh, that was it. <laughs> that was the one. <laughs> that is it. That is an eight-track reel-to-reel Porta Studio. Oh my god! Can you imagine? It was... Oh my god! Oh, I couldn't actually. That would be just. <laughs> amazing now, look at all the heads yeah. i know like well there's yeah there'd be a record and playback and i think and, you, and I, eight tracks too could you imagine and that's only on quarter inch tape those tracks would be so narrow yeah i think you'd have to saw that the side uh like the the right to side make a was, loop yeah, you'd have to saw yeah. That. <laughs> yeah you could drill a hole through or something and Amazing. Yeah, that was quite the find. Um, oh, I wonder and, who bought and, it. I don't know. Uh, can I share another screen just because it was like we were talking about long loops before? Yeah, sure. Where did Zoom go on me? Uh, now, this is this is like, remember. Uh, if, if you guys went, I think it sounds like 2019 Marcus Fisher was there and he had a bit of a tape loop, but this is one that he did another performance at a different place, but look at where this tape is going. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. Around the <laughs> oh, oh, right. I saw this guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. He was, he, he was at the sounds like. Yeah. Oh, that was brilliant when he did that. Yeah. Yeah. He likes yeah, what a nice loops as well. He, he rec like if you're going to use a reel to reel kind of like that, he, he, he had recommended uh, 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 old TIAC ones. They're, mm -hmm. they're, they're particularly well built. Or, oh, yeah. you know, and of course, if, if you can spend the money and, 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 and I don't know if, if, if it's your dream reel to reel to get, but a Niagara. Niagara, hey? Yeah. Really, I gotta look that up. Oh, you! Oh, you! Oh, you've never heard. Oh no, they are. They are like the. They're like really, really deluxe, uh, reel to reel machines. Oh yeah, like and they're wow. ridiculous. And they're ridiculously expensive. They're like it's almost like unobtainium. They're so expensive. Right. Well, <laughs> well the um. Oh yeah, here's one on. Here's one on eBay for ten thousand dollars. There you go. <laughs> uh, well, actually, the film pool has one. Because they used a, a Niagara. Yeah, they used to be used for are you, portable. Are you still? Are you still a member? Yeah. <laughs> you should go. You should borrow that thing for a long time. <laughs> yeah, the the university also has some, uh, at least one nice reel to reel. Uh huh. But I don't think we're. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I don't think it's it, it's something that usually organizations save because there might be some archival material that they might need to play back at some time. So yeah, maybe, yeah. but they wouldn't maybe. necessarily need that machine to do it though. So no, no, no. Um, this reminds me a little bit of like, I, I buy like super eight, uh, super eight projectors and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, I'm looking on eBay and you know, you, you sometimes you find cheaper, cheaper devices, but, you're not really sure if they're actually going to work when they, mm -hmm. when you get them. Um, yeah. And that's always, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a gamble every time, unless it says tested or whatever. It's, I always find it's a little bit of a gamble to, to get to, to sort of start to buy this kind of stuff. Cause it, you know, it, it might be hard to find someone that could fix it for you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I can, 
I bought four Bell and Howell Super 8 cameras, um, all broken. Mm-hmm. That was that's just like that's what you got to go through, I guess. But they were kind of cheap, twenty bucks each. But yeah. were you able to cobble together one working one from all the bits? <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, uh, I did get one to work uh, out of all the the pieces, but then. When I got it working, I was too sketched out about the light meter. <laughs> I oh. thought, like, if this was so broken, I don't want to shoot such expensive film <laughs> on this camera because what if it's just garbage? It doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, I've got a. Should I do one more loop and, and do the cut? And yeah. would you like yeah. to see that again? Yeah, sure. for sure. Yeah, okay. I'll do one more here and then. Um, as I should have brought down my mini reel to reel that I found real cool um, color me look. intrigued I want to see this thing now yeah have you ever seen them they they come like usually with a little built in um, microphone I, 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 I'm kind of picturing what you're talking about but I'd sure like to see what yours looks like for sure sure I could grab it in a bit here um those those were kind of around just before cassettes, so like late late sixties sort of era. Yeah, I think so. This one is just a toy, which is like it's too bad because like you can't really. There's no output or input, just the microphone. Um, but it would be like a cool thing to. I bet you could find a place to wire an output on it. Oh and, yeah, for and, sure, and an, and an input too. Yeah, like if I was more brave, I feel like I would do that. Maybe someday. Um, I'm still like practicing my soldering. So, okay, so this time I'm going to cut this first so we, I know it's the right way. We don't run into that problem like last time where it was a, um, a figure eight loop. Oh, yeah. yeah, that was annoying. Okay, so shiny side, we're going to tape on the shiny side because the shiny side is the coating. Uh, And we can cover up the coating. We don't want to cover up the matte side. Maybe we'll make it a little bit longer. make it a little bit more challenging. <laughs> but now that I have the window open here, it's a lot more manageable. Okay, what have we got here? Hopefully. Oh yeah, it's pretty short actually. I'm just searching eBay while you're doing this. And it's just a wonderland yeah. of old equipment. Um, who knows? If, <laughs> who knows if it works or not, but there's some, there's some pretty good deals on here. Oh yeah. Like I'm tested stuff. Eh? Yeah. It's just, um, boy, Sony made so many different models. Like they, it's just every one of these is a different model. It's amazing how many products they made. And it's, There's one, uh, I'm looking at Nagras here too. The, the first one I'm, I'm seeing here starts at 2,800 bucks. Whoa. There's a mono one for 1,500. And a mini one for thirty five hundred. Oh, wow. mini, eh? Yeah, it's like it's. I'm. I'm not sure what the spec is on it, but hmm. it, it, it's small. These things they they look like they were made. Oh wow, um, they look like they were made for the for the for NASA or something. They're, they're like they're made. They're made for spies. Yeah. 
Oh, oh even, here's a listing one. Oh. Neg- Negra Kudelski PS1 JBR Vintage Spy Playback Audio System. <laughs> <laughs> nice. This is a this is a great one. It's got the it's opened up and you can see the circuit boards and everything. It's just nice. Where was ne- what um, country were Negras made? Are they Swiss or? I think they're Swiss. Because it, it looks a lot like um, the Bolex camera in their kind of design and stuff, which was really very, um, very sturdy yeah. equipment. Niagara is a brand of portable audio recorders produced from 1951 in Switzerland. There you go. Mm-hmm. The, other, oh. the other fancy brand that I would like to get my hands on are Revox. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. The, <clears throat> like yeah. the shoes. No, not not <laughs> <laughs> with a V. Yes. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's actually the university has a has a Reebok. Are you serious? Wow. Yeah, yeah that's that's what uh, that's what Robert Fripp and Brian Eno used for like no pussy footing. They use Reebok tape machines. Wow. short snapper this time. Oh, here's a B77 for 2,900 bucks. What's what's a B77? That's like one of one of the Reebok uh, tape machines. Well, maybe Holofont should do a uh, an uh, an antique equipment, the antique road work, show workshop in the after COVID ends. We could we could gather all the old gear we can find. Here's the listing for it, and in, uh, in, the, in the chat. There we go. Just one vase this time. Oh, right, my audio. <clears throat> Use it. Let me share that again. Can you explain the monitoring, please? Oh, sure. Yeah, Um, I can. So um, I'm monitoring the line just with my headphones, with my line out of my um, sound card here. So the sound card is actually acting like a little bit of a mixer. Like I showed you before, um, the line outs, the eighth inch line outs are being converted to quarter inch. uh, And then into the lines in here. I've got two lines into the computer through this sound card. And then this sound card just has a pass through. Um, It's true here. And I've got it like mixed properly this way. Um, Yeah. I don't know. This thing is messing up a bit, but I mean, like when you're recording. Oh, when I'm, when I'm recording. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So um, yeah. So then it's going in right into the sound card. And then I'm just using Audacity, a free program. You're probably familiar, you might be familiar with it. Uh, And I'm not actually recording at all, um, just monitoring. Um, So here we've got, oh, it stopped right now, but we can start it monitoring. Are you using the stream? Yeah, and then because- I learned about that. I learned about that at Ernie's, Ernie's talk. Oh, really? Hey, <laughs> right on. <laughs> yeah, so um, Zoom has uh, the nifty feature to share screen and in advance, it just has computer audio. So you don't have to share your screen, really, just the audio. And when you do it this way, it's like in a hi-fi way. Nice. I'm just doing it mono because we were having some stereo issues, but the mono is still like hi-fi enough uh, for this especially. Uh, yeah, a lot of people sh- aren't on their Zoom 
like most people on Zoom, they don't have it set up to get stereo anyway. Yeah. Like if I was doing maybe a like an Ableton Live kind of thing, like a workshop, I would definitely want it on stereo. But oh, for yeah. most, most things, I don't know. For this especially, mono is just fine. And then you can just share. Uh, and then it's, yeah, it shares your line in. So as long as inside your computer, your computer, if you've got a Ubuntu, it might look like this, but it might not. So here, I just have my input device as the Fast Track Pro. That's the sound card. And uh, yeah, anything that's any device that you have here is your input. That's what it's going to share. So you use the computer, the computer to monitor. Yeah. Um, yeah, the monitoring on my end, like on the headphones, just happens at the um, sound card, which is nice because then I don't have to do any extra, mon like anything extra. But the the computer hands it out to everybody else. Uh, let me see if I, I think I have to close this and open it again. Does that make sense? Yeah, sort of like I don't, I don't I don't really care about the zoom or whatever, but just like because you're um, recording, so obviously you're not like playing back what you're recording over, unless um, like so when you're doing layers, if you're recording like another sound. Oh, oh, you mean on, on the tape? Is that what I'm you're talking second. about? Uh. Yeah, when you're recording to tape, like another time. Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. So the second, when I do the second recording on this machine, unfortunately, I am I cannot hear the first track. I can't monitor what okay. I'm doing as I record okay. on top of it. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, uh, like Ernie was saying, you need another playhead. So some of these tape machines have three uh, heads uh, and the second playhead allows you to monitor. So then you can record, monitor, and then you'd have an erase head as well. Um, I, I, uh, sorry to interrupt. I, I pasted a, an eBay listing for a three head machine. Yeah. If you want to click on that, it, it's uh, Sony tc350 and it says uh somewhere it says three head yeah three head that, that's in um it's in vernon bc and they 110 dollars oh nice but uh I it's don't have any. Place. I don't have any reels to. Basically, the, the, nobody is able to test these. So I've, I've got <laughs> tape. I've got tape. No, but I mean the seller. The sellers. Oh, yeah. The sellers can't test it. So it's such a such a ga gamble. It's I a know. gamble. That, that's why. I, that's why I like buying local. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would buy it locally. Yeah, for a hundred bucks, I don't think I would chance it. And then, like, what, what's the seller's rating? If the guy had a good rating, maybe he'd be selling something that's decent. But if it's, like, whatever. Yeah, he's exactly, got, right? He's 10. He's got 10. Uh, he's and got sales. A, a yellow star. Um, oh, dictaphones. Yeah, dictaphones are nice. I think there was a there was a time there was all kinds of obsolete gear like that around in garage sales and stuff, but I feel like it might be harder to find things just in the like locally. I always go to eBay to get the, the widest variety of things. Well, the Zoom gods are not 
in my favor again. I don't know why it's happening. Man alive. This is, it should be working, but it's not. I don't know. Oh, sorry about that. I guess we should have, <laughs> should have done one more and then switch the screen sharing. Oh, sorry. Uh, but Ernie, you want to see that other, that mini? Um, I would love to see what that thing looks like. I can, I can almost picture it. Yeah, sure. I'll grab it. I'll show you that. I, <laughs> the model, so the model is ass man. This is a <laughs> strange. Uh... It's a, it, it means like ace tone, like ace mat, like it's a German. Uh, oh, oh. Okay. Of course it's German. Oh, speaking of German, another uh, popular brand of uh, reel-to-reel -reel machine to use for uh, tape looping is Ewer. U H E R. Yes. That's uh, like uh, Will mentioned Heinbach at the at the start of the workshop. Uh, he he likes Ewer tape machines. Mm. Yeah, there's that Handbach video with the very, very long tape. Yeah. Loop, and then the, he's got like the razors and stuff. That was cool. Oh, yeah. His destruction loop where he's got the razor scraping the oxide off of the tape. Yeah. <laughs> he did the hard work of setting it up and waiting for it to record and play back. <laughs> Although that's all the, all the fun, I guess. Here's a, I just pasted a cool little, uh, you are, uh, Portable. Looks looks pretty funky. Looks like something out of Blade Runner. Yeah, oh, that's cool. That, that's a that's a that's a Void Conf machine. <laughs> yeah, I wonder what the, the sort of a weird box on the on the that's left a side with a good question. This look this one looks really serious. Yeah, look at all. It's and and so also, it's in Italian. Well, <laughs> I'll, pay, yeah. I'll pay double. <laughs> yeah, I'll show you this thing quickly so you can oh, yeah, yeah, check yeah. it out. Twin oh, play, it's called. Yes. It's like a kitchen appliance. <laughs> yeah, it's so small. You can just take it's portable. That's exactly it's, what I was imagining. It's so cute. Oh, that look is at really that. cute. And, and that big blob is a, the mic right there. Yeah, that's the mic. That's in mic. <laughs> Too much. Yeah. You can see here, it's like a little telephone. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it's so cute. And it's just got play and record and stop and rewind volume. That's it. But you could probably thought, make, make a loop on your big machine and play it on there. Yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking you could do. You could. You could have them both playing, kind of. Yeah. You, know, you could. Well, you play. could. You, you could record on the big one and have this one play it back. Yeah. Yeah, you could like, do that, couldn't you? You could. You could. You could make a big long echo with those two machines. That's a good idea. I should try that. Yeah, and then what you'd have to do is wire an output onto here because it's only got the speaker. Oh yeah, you definitely have to do that. Yeah. I mean, it's got a mic input, but. Uh... What's, what's who knows the AC adapter? Okay, and yeah, some kind of AC, but it just takes big batteries. These, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that's brilliant! Thanks for showing me that, Will. Oh yeah, you're welcome. Um, I guess any other questions about the reel to reel? Um, before we are out of time here, I've got a question. Yeah. Um regarding like the layering um mm -hmm. i guess it makes sense to start with a certain type of sound and then layer other types of sounds mm -hmm. but i wonder like what kind of possibilities there are for mixing that up hmm. yeah that's a good question um yeah S so Sorry, I have to be right back. Sorry. You gotta go. <laughs> have you controlled the uh, the volume for the input? Is that through the mixer? Uh yeah. So it's I'm using the mixer to control the volume here, um, as well as these inputs. These are like the in, the volume input. They're the volume and the input volume. 
in one. So Sorry, it's like a combo combo of, of, of uh, volume control. And I, I don't want to uh, like be a copycat or anything, but what kind of keyboard is that? Oh yeah, this keyboard. Yeah, um, this is generic. <laughs> what is the name of it? Wow, I never thought. It's, it's probably like something... a Chinese knockoff kind of. Probably Casio, but with a Z. <laughs> no, it's not even close to like Casio. Well, look at the colors of the buttons. So it looks like an SK1 it's a, colors it's on a the knock... button. Yeah, it's a knockoff kind of. I know. That's why, that's why I said Casio with a Z. <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> um, you know, what? I, I don't know if there's it's a, a no brand name. on it's here. A, it's, it's a no name. It's a no name. It's beautiful, um, man. It is kind of gorgeous, isn't it? Like it's something you don't always find. It's all. It's got a dual phony, so oh, only two only, notes only, at a time. Oh, really? Hilarious. I yeah. Think so, I was. I was <laughs> saying before when you were playing the drums, I really thought that the percussion sounds were quite nice. They're not bad, yeah. They're better that. than that was, I was expecting. That would be good to sample those little sounds. It's pretty crisp. Yeah, it's not bad, is it? Uh, and it has a microphone in, which I don't know if I've ever tested, but I don't know if it'd be much louder than your voice coming out. I guess you have a line out, but <laughs> it, it doesn't. Does it? Have, does it sample? It doesn't sample, unfortunately. Oh. I yeah. guess just, I guess this is kind of like so that you can accompany yourself while you're singing, isn't that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like you can awesome. play play the demo and then sing along with it. Oh, <laughs> that's a better that's a better <laughs> demo than a Casio VL tone, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I, I have a I have a question. Um, so you've been use have you been using this? primarily as a um, like a production tool rather than a performance tool like would you use this as a live performance or is it too finicky um, I have used it for live performance yeah I did a series of shows two summers ago um, where I would run a tape loop along with um, se some sequence synths um, it's it makes for a good show, for sure. Um, oh, just the physical spectacle of it, right? Exactly. It's really fun. It's insanely stressful. Um, and it like, like I was using one specifically for live performance. And one time it just stopped working. So uh. <laughs> I took it to Regina, actually. And it played its last show there. And then that was it. It was done. Mm. um so it's like it's a gamble doing it live your machine might break but I, I i would do it live just don't i wouldn't travel too much if you don't trust your machine because you know, it could break and then um would you use a single loop during that performance or would you use several would you do one after another or yeah i would do several um i would switch the loops like a few times in the performance. Um, just run over, stop the machine, feed in the tape, run back to my other setup. And, mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, it's, it, it was a good way for me to introduce like samples of my field recordings into like my ambient music because I didn't want to just play my Zoom recorder, you know, into my mixer. Is that, what fun is that when I'm using like all old analog synths rather play, like play your zoom recorder through an analog synth yeah I could run it through the ms20 or something oh totally yeah that would be so cool because of the envelope follower and pitch follower in the ms20 yeah could you imagine what havoc you could wreak with those sounds yeah I should try that actually yeah um good idea then I can save my tape machine for home. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, uh, I'd hate to like go back to what I was talking about. But the, oh yeah, go ahead. Um, you mentioned the the uh, f the field recordings. 
-hmm. and then layering over top of them oh yeah 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 so that kind of got that's what sparked my imagination i was thinking about the potential for different the way that it interacts with the layers mm -hmm. um i guess it's probably probably limited to whatever the machine whatever the machine you have can do i suppose yeah yeah you're absolutely right like you are limited to your hardware for sure and like how sensitive is your record head <clears throat> like is it going to wipe everything you've recorded but field recordings have a lot of space i generally find so i was laying like layering a few recordings like taking rec recordings i've made years ago in like maybe another country and then integrating it into um recordings i've made you know in winnipeg or something like of the beach um and then like kind of mixing those together and that worked really well because they're they're so spacious and you can like add more into them and then just being more careful with sounds like synthesized sounds because they can be so you know full strong to not like overtake that um i'd like to try doing it with more uh, like analog instruments <laughs> like not synthesized instruments you know using violin or guitar acoustic guitar i think you could get some interesting results so there's more yeah. space there right so you can more potential to layer them together mm -hmm. yeah that's cool thanks oh i also the sound that it made when you had the figure eight um did you flip it or did that same one back around so that was just uh normal yeah yeah i, I flipped it yeah yeah the sound of it when it was going over the fold is interesting and like can you layer over that like does, is that just silence or is it like damaged me tape media and is it not good to use anymore or like um, at the break well where there's like a fold or i guess that oh, where there's a fold, fold. Mm. yeah i know what you're saying um well, not so much a fold, more... but like where, where, where it was it when it was recording when it flipped while it was recording? Oh. Yeah, you could kind of hear it, couldn't you? It yeah. did. Uh, it kind of got muffled, but also like warbly. Yeah. And yeah, it had a kind of a specific sound to it. I feel like once you, if you record it over that again, you might just lose it. Um, some of it might still be in there faintly. Yeah. But um, yeah, like if you crinkle the tape and like mess with it physically, you can get like more like kind of ratchet sounds and more distorted kind of things happening. Um, sometimes you get fun things at the break where it like squeals, like really high pitched sounds, little like f funny sounds. You don't know where they've come from. Um, so it's cool to, yeah, the more experimenting that you do you find these like interesting things happen you don't know how they got there and just kind of like you wouldn't find those anywhere else really thanks yeah you're welcome uh we're, we're sort of running to the end of this does anybody have one last question um uh, for will no <laughs> Yeah, we had a lot of questions, so thanks this, for this, this. This has been really entertaining and fun. Will, thank you for going through all of this and setting up this stuff and doing this in, in front of people. And uh, I, I, I feel your pain doing some of that tape splicing and some of the stuff because I've gone through that and it, it, it can be rigorous, but I'm so glad you did it because it was really enlightening and it was so cool to see you do it. Wow, thanks so much. Um, yeah, it was a pleasure, really. It was fun. Yeah. So I, ha I have a couple of things to say before yeah. we go. Um, first, um, that that last uh, tape machine that Ian sent us, the RT2000, uh, that mm -hmm. was uh, specially, uh, it, it's based on a Ewer tape machine, but it was uh, used by Italian law enforcement for wiretapping. And that big, that big blob on the front, that yeah. like there's that big thing sticking out the front. That's a yeah. printer. Oh, that's a little printer, apparently. 
weird oh, yeah <laughs> i'm not sure what it would print maybe time i don't know but anyway that's what that's all about i, I looked that up it was wild huh. and um because we're near the end i have one more thing to say uh with my holophon hat on um where are we at here ah yes this sunday uh, April 17th, we're doing a special workshop in partnership with Paved Arts Saskatoon with Regina musician Wygretz, uh, Greta Peart. Uh, she's going to be doing a workshop about Ableton Live for Beginners, which will introduce participants to the software and provide insight into music production. We will learn how to record MIDI, edit audio, and learn about different effects and devices. This workshop is aimed to introduce beginners to the world of music production. The tech requirements are a computer, headphones, and a sufficient internet connection as required. Ableton Live uh, 10 or 11 is recommended, but not necessary. Now, Wygretz, uh, in addition, uh, if, you, if you check out her uh, Instagram, uh, there will be a link in her bio to a, a link tree thing. And in that link tree is a printed uh, guide to Ableton, like music production that she's done that is really, really quite lovely. And I, I recommend you check that out. So that's all I've got to say. Great. Right on. Let's let's call it a night. Thanks, everybody. Will, thank oh. you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, no, yeah. thank you. Thanks for coming. Awesome. Okay. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, thank everyone. You.